Nice to have you with us. And so it's just kind of a funny 
strong way of, you know, being a provocateur. Paltrow took over as Boop CEO in 2016, expanding the business to include new products, a podcast, and a pair of much-discussed Netflix series, all while receiving an on-the-job MBA. You're in every meeting. You're making all the decisions. Was that a hard adjustment for you where, oh my gosh, this is all coming back to me at the end? Yeah, for sure. And a scary one. I think the team that we have is amazing and we make decisions collectively, but the buck always stops with me. So that's scary, right? Especially like having gotten through a pandemic and now there's a looming recession and it's always something and you think like, you know, is this going to be okay? Do, do I have the chops to get us through this? Like, what am I not thinking about? But then the next day is a good day and you're, you're right back at it, right? Yeah, or the next day, you know, someone says, like, you know, I had a conversation with my daughter about her sexual wellness that I never thought possible and you facilitated that and I'm so grateful. So those things always fill me back up and make me think, like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going to keep going. Did you have people in your life saying, this is nice, Gwyneth. We're doing pretty well with the acting thing. Let's, let's keep our focus here. Yeah, definitely. You know, people not closest to me were like, you know, what the hell is she doing? Why is she doing that? To focus on Goop, Paltrow turned away from a glittering career in Hollywood that was launched in the mid-1990s by a run of hit movies like Seven. Sliding Doors. Congratulations, you want me up for age, please. And Shakespeare in Love, Same the role here. that earned her the Oscar. There is no day for me to look at her. She is my essence. Paltrow was born into the business as the daughter of famed producer and director Bruce Paltrow and actress Blythe Danner. I spent so much time sitting watching her rehearse plays. It was such a giant part of my childhood. And she was just so incredibly powerful. And she had such freedom on stage. And so I was like, well, I want to do that as a job. But the celebrity that came with Paltrow's success slowly began to drive her away. I think it was probably around the time of winning the Oscar where you know, you go from people kind of being curious about you or discovering you or rooting for you to it all being upended and people really wanting to tear you down and take great pleasure in it. It gets away from you. You can't control all that, right? Which ends up being a really beautiful lesson in knowing who you are, loving the people you love, being totally in integrity and like, everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know you cannot say I'm morning to Too late. Too late. I'm sort of a fake extrovert who's had to get comfortable pretending to be an extrovert, and I'm really not. So I don't love being in front of the camera, I don't love being the center of attention, I hate speaking in public, and I've had to learn all those skills to sort of like prop myself up and do it anyway, but I never felt very fully comfortable being in the public eye to that degree. I still don't. but. It's fantastic that I've been able to do something that's very fulfilling and work with a team that I adore. Paltrow was quick to acknowledge the fame that made her uncomfortable allowed for her next chapter at Coop. The 49-year-old is more at ease in her roles as CEO, as wife to producer Brad Falchuk, and as mom to the two teenagers she shares with ex-husband Chris Martin. But I do have one going off to college. You realize how finite it went so quickly. I feel very blessed that I've been able to try to pursue this other career and kind of like keep hours, you know, where I'm able to be home and make them dinner and stuff like that. When you think, Gwyneth, about the Hollywood side of your life now, mm -hmm. what does it take to get you involved? I mean, if my husband was doing something and wanted me to do it, I would do it. I think I would work with friends if they wanted me, you know, like people that I know and love and if it wasn't too big of a part kind of a thing. Do you miss that part of your life? Do you be on sets all the time and traveling and doing all those things? No, I don't. I really don't miss it at all. I think I'm so lucky that I got to do it and I still, I'm sure I still will at some point, 
I really love what I do. I did promise my mother at some point before I die, I told her that I would go and you know do a play. So I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna. I'm gonna okay. deliver on that promise at some point. We'll be watching for that play. Our big thanks to Gwyneth and the team at Goop for hosting us at their store in Sag Harbor, New York. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full interview with Gwyneth Paltrow, including her outlook on a milestone birthday coming this year. You can find our conversation on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, a new Sunday Sit Down with another Hollywood icon, Kevin Bacon, on his life-changing breakout in Footloose. Coming around 26 degrees of Kevin Bacon game, and his latest role as the very creepy director of a very creepy summer camp. I did the Kevin Bacon next week on Sunday today. It is going to be a hot one out there today, so let's turn now and get a quick check of your local Sunday weather. Well, really, Willie is right because uh, we've got temperatures in the 70s and 80s right now. We will continue to see humidity levels rise. You're going to feel the rise minute by minute. Temperatures rising as well into the upper 90s today. Uh, average temperature for this time of year right around 90 degrees. This will be our seventh consecutive day at 90 degrees or above. Very hot today if you're headed to the pool. We do have maybe a stray storm, but better chance of storms tomorrow, more clouds. Cooler 80s and rain chances through the day on Tuesday. Ahead on Sunday today, our highs and lows of the week, including an escalating sign war between two of America's fast food superpowers, armed with greasy food and snark. We'll take you to the front lines. But up next, Harry Smith takes us to Montana for a look up close at an American epidemic we likely haven't heard about. We're back in just 30 seconds. <laughs> Yeah.